And in the co-main event, we got the interim title on the line with Tom Aspinall defending the belt versus Curtis Blades. And honestly, man, I don't get the line. Like, I need someone to explain this to me. Like, how is Tom Aspinall such a big favorite? Like, to me, this fight should be... You know, I get Aspinall being slightly favored, maybe like minus 175-ish or something like that, ultimately, just because... Curtis Blades has had a history of kind of losing in these big fights. He's been knocked out before, and Aspinall has that touch of death, and he kind of has that it factor about him. But minus 400? Like, you're going to have to explain that one to me, man, because you look at Tom Aspinall's career, it's like, I believe 13 of his 14 wins are in round one, and after round one, he's only one and two. So you're telling me that you're going to lay that type of money down on a guy that if it gets out of the first round as a losing record, especially against a guy in Curtis Blades that has an insane cardio for a heavyweight. I mean, even though we've seen him get tired versus Volkov or things like that, he's had five round fights or like in that fight for just he attempted like 30 takedowns or something like he has a motor, he could go. So it's like. Man, I think that's a it's a crazy price. I think that Curtis Blades has a lot of value. You look at Curtis Blades, for me, I think early in the fight, he has to try to not engage as much. I mean, I, I get someone saying, you know, close the distance right away and try to go for that takedown. Um, but Aspinall has great timing. He's going to be very fast, sharp, early. And he could just catch... Blades coming in, one shot, and that could be all she wrote. So I think Curtis Blades has to be smart. You know, he has to use his movement, use his ability that a lot of other heavyweights don't have, that Arsenal has as well, to move, use footwork, and try to be very defensively responsible early, don't open up too much. If an easy opportunity to get the takedown materializes, obviously take it. But don't be so, you know, gung-ho on having to get a takedown in the first round or even maybe even like the first seven, eight minutes of the fight. Let Aspinall walk you down. Let Aspinall throw his big punches. And I want to see how Aspinall reacts as the fight goes later. If the fight goes later, Blades gets a takedown. We could see, you know, a total um, kind of exposing of Aspinall's cardio and some of the other things about him, man. I mean... That's why I think he's not necessarily a foregone conclusion here. Um, Blades, to me, is the better wrestler and grappler. I, I understand people talking about Tom Aspinall's grappling. And if Aspinall's on top, I definitely would be worried he could get the finish. But if Curtis Blades is on top of Tom Aspinall throwing his elbows, I don't see Aspinall's jiu-jitsu being much of a factor. And I don't think Aspinall's going to be able to get back up to his feet. Or if he does, I don't think he's going to be able to do it too many times. Um, it's just on the feet, there's a big gap, right? It's like Curtis Blades is going to have to figure out how to close that distance without getting clipped up. And Curtis Blades also has questionable fight IQ. And like I said, he, he seems like he kind of has a tendency to choke a little bit in these big moments like... He'll fail one takedown versus Sergei Pavlovich and then turn into a striker and never shoot again. And it's like certain things like that. It's just a little puzzling with Blades where it's like he just doesn't show up in certain nights. So hopefully this time, you know, you have to think Blades knows in the back of his head that he's not a super marketable guy. There's not going to be too many opportunities for him to get title shots and these huge... um spots on co-main events and pay-per-view cards so i think he's gonna put it all out there but i think that pressure could also be a detriment man i mean he's also in tom aspinall's home country the whole crowd's gonna be booing him going crazy and we could see another you know flat nothing performance from blades where he just lays an egg and gets knocked out in the first round so i honestly see this fight is a lot closer to um you know, a toss-up than where the line is now, and I think the line's a little bit ridiculous. Like, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I think Aspinall is getting way overhyped. Um, but 
having said that, I'm still going to pick him to win by first round knockout. I just don't have that conviction to go with Blaze as the underdog, man. I think he's a good value bet. Um, but as a pure prediction, I'll say Tom Aspinall wins via first round knockout. It's just... Man, I think Tom Ospinall has a lot of questions he still has to answer, and I think a lot of people are kind of crowning him a little bit too early in terms of anointing him like one of the best heavyweights of all time and all this type of stuff.